So the next project that we're going to talk about is Arctas. And in this project, we, what we did, we were in an airplane sampling forest fires in the Arctic. So uh, the, the Arctic, so this is now northern Canada, the province of Saskatchewan, and much of it is forested. There's not really that, many, that much population there. And uh, due to global climate change, the frequency of forest fires is increasing greatly. And these forest fires are sources of lots of aerosols and pollutants. So we were there to study them in more detail than people had been able to do that before. And it's, it's handy to be there in an airplane because then we can quickly go from, to one fire one day and then another fire the next day, or look at the smoke from yesterday's fire and look how it has changed uh, during one day of processing. And here we can see one picture of um, kind of a forest fire from the distance. These fires are, are enormous. They, you know, they may fire for days actually up there. They actually don't really try to fight them. They just watch them uh, because it's too far north. And we can see here the wing of the airplane and then the fire from the distance. And as we zoom in in this other picture, you can see here uh, you know, what the fire is, is really uh, is burning in different points at the same time. And you can also see in the picture a number of, of scars, which is what, what has already been burned, but also much of green material, which is probably what's going to be burned next. And you see uh, a large amount of smoke coming out. And, and basically, why you see the smoke is because uh, there are aerosols there, there are particles, and they are reflecting the light. And that's why, that's why you can see it. Um, and what we were doing, so here we were overflying it, but the real purpose of the campaign was to fly into the smoke. And uh, so here we are getting close. You see the airplane, and we are approaching one of the, one of the fires. And here we are flying through the smoke. So you see we are, we are um, in the middle of the smoke and through inlets like, uh, like this one again, we are sampling the smoke and getting it into the instrument where, where we are and analyzing it in real time. And we are communicating through the intercom of the plane saying, you know, I'm, I'm seeing it very high right now, I'm seeing it low, I'm seeing this type of smoke versus that type of smoke. And, um, and that information through a central, uh, what we call a mission scientist, is used to guide the plane. So that person is the only one who's authorized to talk to the pilots and may say, well, can we go through that again? Or can we fly higher? Or can we come back here? And then the pilots then have to clear that with the air traffic control. And uh, in places like this, you know, it's the far north. There aren't many airplanes, so it's, it's actually easy to achieve. If you're flying through Mexico City or to Los Angeles, where there are a lot of airplanes, that can be very difficult. And, they, and it takes a lot of negotiation in their part to be able to fly where the scientists may want to go. Uh, <clears throat> here we can see a scientist from another team, and they are looking at their data as, as it's coming in and, and, and seeing what, uh, what's going on in the smoke. And this is, again, a picture taken from where we were looking forward in the plane. And again, we see different scientists looking at their instruments and making sure everything is working. These instruments are very delicate, and sometimes uh, you know, they require, it's so expensive to get everyone there to do this research that you really want to make sure that everything is working properly. So then what you do is you fly all these instruments, but you also fly the scientists who build them, who know the most about them. And they are there you know, for many hours a day. But, uh, but that's really what it takes to, you know, to understand what's really going on. And here we can see some other views of the fires from, fa from farther away. So this was the same day um, later in the day. And you can see, again, the fire is originating from many different places and is making a cloud of smoke that then is, is merging into an actual cloud. Okay, so that's, which is part of the reason why we, why we study the smoke. Here we are again entering the smoke plume, as well as here. And uh, this, these fires, as I said, were enormous, and we would go into this cloud. And there are no pictures in the cloud because basically you don't see anything. It's like, like when you're flying in a real cloud. You look at the window, you, you don't see anything. And we would cross the, the plume of smoke, and we would be in it for half an hour. So half an hour at the flight speed of a commercial aircraft is many, many, many miles. And we will go, go out of the plume finally, and then we'll turn around and go back through it again another half an hour. So you know, really being up there makes you realize just how enormous these fires are and how, you know, if they become twice as frequent due to climate change, then that's certainly going to be uh, something we need to understand better. Uh, and actually, this is now a picture. When we were in the smoke, and this is what you see for half an hour, just smoke. You, you see the wing of the airplane, and you don't see much else. So uh, this was a really interesting project for us. And uh, the data from this study, so actually, 
It takes a month to acquire all this data, to fly through the mind. It takes several years to digest the data from these advanced instruments and really understand what they mean. So we are now, we are now in, in the middle of that process. We've been digesting the data, but we probably have another couple of years. And then we, we talk to other scientists, we present this in, in conferences and write it in papers, and that's, that's, the, that's really where most of our time is spent. It's not the glamorous part in which you are flying on an airplane, but it's really when you're sitting back in the lab uh, with your computer and, and talking to others and, and really trying to make sense of what we have seen and how it may be different or consistent with what other people knew. Both are interesting. If, if we confirm the way people were thinking about the problem, that's, um, that gives us confidence that that's something we understand. If it's different, that's also that probably even more interesting than that, that lets us do, um, uh, you know, and, and give us new clues about how, how things may be changing in the future. And we tend to do one of these experiments every couple of years for that very reason, because really it, it takes a lot of time to digest the information.